What's going on with you? I'm doing good. I'm doing blessed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's working. You know what I'm saying? Relaxing today, but had to come up with over too. You know what I'm saying? Bless. Hey, look, I appreciate you coming back. You know, I'm I'm here. Appreciate you having me. You know, it's, it's a lot going on. You know Where your mask at though? Well, here's the thing. See, I'm outside right now, and okay. I don't know. I don't know if you. I, I don't know. I want to get too close. I don't want to distort the sound, but I'm actually <laughs> here. I'm working um, with the Sparks dancers right now. They're doing a routine on one of my songs, so I'm making a little cameo in their video. But I'm on break right now. You know, so I'm okay, no, with you. So, so you know, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So T A P heard a lot about you. You know what I'm saying? Real proud of you. I like your style. A lot of energy. You. you know what I'm saying? Let everybody know who is T A P. You know what I'm saying? If I was to introduce you to somebody, let them know. Who are you? You know what okay. I'm saying? Well, you know, I'm a young, young from Inglewood, California, you know, West Coast, and uh, Howard University graduate. So, okay. H -U. I, I, H -U, you know, you know, okay. Okay. you know, that's the only way to go. Uh, but it basically kind of embodies who I am. I come from two musicians, um, basically engulfed in music since before I can remember. Um, and it's just been my way of communicating with people, um, young, old you know, uh, intermediate people who don't even necessarily call, consider themselves rap fans are, are fans of my music. And so the influence that I feel like my style, my creativity has on the genre, just as music as a whole, is, is beautiful to see in the eyes of other people, you know, and fans and followers and stuff like that. So that's, that's me. Um, I do commercials as well. And um, the music kind of expands beyond just performing. A lot of artists just think, you know, okay, so I'm a, I'm a rapper, I'm a singer, okay, I'm just going to do shows, I'm going to write somebody behind the scenes, but it's so many more avenues than that. Uh, I do music placements for commercials, TV shows, and so it's, it's so many ways to integrate your music to really get to that real money outside of just being an artist. That's true. Fact. You know, it's right? a whole world that we, we, some oh people just stuck in one bubble, and it's it's a lot of ways to get the bag, you know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, so many. They are yeah. begging us to get the bag in some places, we just got to know where to look, so... But yeah, that's that's what I do. I do music, you know, for all genres. Uh, I love it. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So who'd you grow up listening to? You know what I'm saying? Whether with somebody in your family oh, circle, like just give me some artists that really inspire right. you to be so, TV. So it's a trip because my family, I'm born and raised in the church. Baker Central, that's my oh, home yeah. church. So of course, gospel music has always been my foundation, uh, which is kind of the foundation for every other type of music when you think about it. Um, I love me some Kirk Franklin, but also because you know he was like the the new age Christian sound. It was like, oh, I could I could do the bounce and say, hey Jesus, yeah, okay, yeah. you know. What he I'm had saying? us all feeling. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> like the Holy Ghost. You know what I'm saying, like stop, like yeah. for real. But um, that was like my foundation in terms of like Christian music. But my biggest influences in terms of hip hop and R and B and stuff is definitely Missy Elliott. Like, Missy. Oh, Missy, yeah. Super duper fly. Changed my life, like. Yeah, it changed my life, life. Like I didn't know that you could like be all of this and you could be cool, you could be sexy, you could be funny with the girls, you could be funny with the girls. But like, but you could be dope. Like, and that's what Missy. Missy was just like, okay, I can do all of that and not have to compromise, you know. So Missy yeah. was definitely an influence. Lauren Hill, of course, definitely. The fact that she was just a beast in her own right, um, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Um, jazz, pop, rock. I mean. My household, we listen to all genres of music, and that's what I really have to thank my parents for, for giving me that that depth of, of musical knowledge, you know, um, in terms of not just rappers and singers, but songwriters. We talk about the baby faces, the Smokey Robinsons, you know, yeah. the new that age. Pin, that pin game is serious. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, because at the end of the day, for me, and my father, he's a songwriter and a drummer and a producer as well. My mom sings, but for me, it was always very heavily um, enforced that music and songs have to tell stories. You know, if you just yeah. saying whatever, nobody's gonna care to get to the ending or care what you gotta say. But if you tell people a story, you know, invested, that they're curious. Now, now they want to know, and it's it's that's that's how I like to, you know, lyrically approach a lot of my songs. It's just in a storytelling way. Yeah, you know? true. I and, and when I listened to your music, I was just listening to a lot. I was I saw the dope video. <laughs> okay, it, and just I could tell like, you bring a lot of energy, but you're also telling the story. And that's what I feel like a lot of artists lack these days is ability to tell a story and, and teach something, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's man. what you're doing. That's what thank you're doing. You. Thank you, thank you. That's what you're doing. So take me back to the first time you ever got in the booth. 
first song, the first Tia P song. You know what I'm saying? The first even if it's not even out, you know what I'm saying? It might be in the vault. Nah, the first Tia P song, actually, okay, now this is. Wow, okay, you're making me think about this. So okay. the very first T of P song was actually I was I was drumming at church. I was that was my first job. At ten years old I started getting my first check and it ain't stopped. So okay. ten years old I was playing drums at church for the kids choir. And um I as a part of the choir I'd written a song called Holy Ghost Party. It was like if you let a Lord slide to your left side, if you let a Lord slide to your right side, blah blah blah. Come on, everybody, it's the Holy Ghost Party. So that was my first yeah. Because again, grew up in the church. It was like, all right, let's, let's do a vacation. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was my very first song. I had always had a studio in my room, in my house. Um, but before I had my own in my room, I was using my father's studio in his house. Um, but yeah, well, which is my house. Um, so yeah, once I, I, yeah, I got the concept and the idea, I laid everything down in my room, did the music, wrote the song, and presented it to the choir. And I think a week later, at the time, we were at the forum. Um, yeah, my church had bought the forum, so that's when we were having service. And that was the first time I would performed. That was the first song I had written. And it was at that moment. And yeah. for those of y'all who don't know, like the forum, that's where the Lakers used to play. Like the forum, they, yeah. you know, reopened and all that stuff. That, that, that arena was packed. And that was my first performance, first song I'd ever written. And it felt so natural. And that was the moment I knew this this is home. This is another yeah. spot. Like this, this is what I want to do. You know, yeah. and I just took off from there, man. Yeah, That's I was gonna ask spot. you so about that performance. Like, were you nervous and everything? Like, you at the forum? You know, what I'm saying you got. It's numbers, like, you know what I'm saying? How'd you, because I know performing, that's one thing a lot of artists struggle with, is going in front of crowds. You know, and even I struggle with that, too. It's funny. My, I've never been a, a nervous person in front of crowds. I like people, and I feel like when God blesses you with certain gifts, it's okay to acknowledge them in order to pursue your, your purpose. And I know that God has given me a personality that, that people are attracted to, that I that if used the right way can be a great catalyst for change, not only with music, but just in people's everyday lives. So that gift that I have doesn't allow me to be fearful when I'm in front of an audience. Because if I'm fearful, then I'm not trusting my gift. And if I'm not trusting my gift, I'm not trusting God. And if I'm not trusting God, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? So true. Yeah. It's, it's for me, it, it all it's, it's cyclical. It all goes back to who do I trust? I'm not trusting me. Yeah. I, I, man is fickle. We we it's just it's just what we are. We're fickle beings. We we try not to be, but it's in our nature, in our flesh. So mm -hmm. that's that's for me what it is. It's it's no fear because I know it's a part of my purpose. And if my purpose is to change somebody's life or give them some inspiration, and I can't be fearful in that. That's no fun. And if I'm not having fun, y'all don't have fun. So that's right. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Okay, okay, okay. So we in the studio creating new songs. Are you um what's your vibe like? You know what I'm saying? Are you are you freestyling? Are you pen and paper? You like a lot of people uh, in the studio. You like to, you know what I'm saying? Like, because that's one thing I ask a lot of artists is, is that yeah. how they get to, how they get to create. You, you know, know it's it's different. I don't really have a set way that I approach a song. It depends on how the song approaches me. It could be maybe uh, I hear a melody. Maybe I hear some type of rhythm. Maybe somebody says something in a conversation that, that I some triggers me and now I hear a rhythm or something now and I'm shutting him out and I'm thinking about how I can make this thing a song or a melody or a hook or a verse or something. So it's it's it depends. I I'm really I go with the vibe. I never try to impose a, a, a formula on something because music I mean, in a sense it's math, but it's not math. It's it's a creative process. You are, I'm a real believer in letting things flow, um, letting the vibe come and not trying to Force anything. I'm I'm big on not forcing a vibe. Like if the energy is not right, I'll wait. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and it's that's just not important at least to me because I know when it's right, you you can't force it when it when it's right, it's gonna be right. You know what I mean? So yeah, sometimes I I'll start with the keys, sometimes I'll start whistling. Yeah, I get you. I get you. So uh but I said a little earlier I saw your music video dope. And it was real dope, you know what I'm saying? Like, Thank you you got a lot of just energy in your music. So specifically with that video and song, what was the inspiration behind it? You know what I'm saying? My manager, actually, he's uh, commenting on my earrings bumping against the things. I'm going to try to lift them up so they not. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to uh, Management 6X Entertainment. He actually came to me with the concept. Because when we uh, started talking about the video, I was like, all right, I, you know, it's like, I had a bunch of ideas floating, and he was like, okay, what if we 
do like straight jacket, padded room vibe. And he knows I'm I'm down for all types of crazy stuff. Like you can hang me upside down. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can shoot me out of a cannon. I'm I'm game. If it looks cool, I'm with it. Um, yeah. it is safe. It is safe. Just you know, trying to live. And um, yeah. <laughs> oh, what happened? Oh, Hi. Hey, what's up? What up? What up? <laughs> what's going on? Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, no, so we still got time. We good. Um, I'm sorry, what are we talking about? I just got that. See, my mind be like, oh, I was about the adult video. The yeah, dope. That. Yeah. So, my, like I said, I'm in all kinds of crazy things. So, my man was presented the idea um, with the, the straight jacket and the padded rooms. I was like, yo, absolutely. I'm gay, man. I, I bought the straight jacket. Uh, we actually had the panels made specifically for the video for padded walls because initially we were going to try to shoot in an asylum. Oh, harder, wow. than you, harder than you think it is to find an yeah, open yeah. asylum that's not creepy because I don't I don't do the, the dead bet, stuff. Yeah, nah, party. I, I, <laughs> see, don't play that. Party, yeah. So yeah, and it just it came to life. And another reason why I knew it would be a great idea is because of the co-collaborator, my brother B Slade, who is an incredible beast in his own right, artist, producer, songwriter, just entertainer, vocalist, he's, he's stupid. And he's kind of out the box as well, so I knew he would fit perfectly right into it, and it just came together, like, no pun intended, it just came together yeah. as if, like it was supposed to, like, this was the only way this video could have been made, and I'm, I'm so grateful to my team for, you know, coming up with that concept, and I'm, I'm glad I trust them, and mm -hmm. I'm glad they know me well enough to know, you know, what I'm with and what I'm not with, so... Again, I emphasis on having a team. I mean, artists are dope. It's good to be independent. I enjoy being independent, but even independent artists need a team because this thing is rough, man. You know, we can't do everything, but a team saves a lot of time. Yeah, I'm sorry, everybody. We all need a team. You know what yes. I'm saying? We all need a team. We all need Absolutely. A team. Yeah. So I was watching your Sway in the Morning freestyle, you know, uh -huh. gassing. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's when the real bars came out. So. How did that come about and, you know what I'm saying, just being on Sway? Because when I see artists get on there, that's that's like kind of a make or break, you know what I'm saying, moment. Yeah. And you really, you know what I'm saying, you did your thing. You know Thank you. How Thank was that you. experience? Sway was that, when I got the call that I was going to be doing Sway, again, management um, made that happen. It was like, it's one of those milestones as an artist. It's kind of like you have to... Uh, kind of over not so much overcome but that you have to go through to like be legit it's like uh i don't know what, what do you call it like um i'm forgetting the word but it's it's one of those moments where it's like okay i'm, I'm also like oh i'm, I'm doing something yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah it was great he was dope the whole team was dope um it was just an experience I'll, I'll never forget for me it's up there to one of my i equate that to one of my hip-hop moments when i opened up for krs1 um, at the Roxy, and we spoke a little bit during the sound check, and he basically said, "Yo, welcome to hip hop." And you know, from the teacher KRS One saying, "Welcome to hip hop." That's that's all I needed. I felt like I checked in, like I was good. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely up there with one of those hip hop pinnacle moments um, that okay. I won't forget. Yeah. Got you, got you. What was the moment you realized, like, you know, you've had another no noteworthy moment, but what was the moment you realized, like, damn? I'm pretty good at this, this music <laughs> thing. Like, was it somebody randomly coming up to you and maybe asking for an autograph or saying, you, you changed my life or, you know what I'm saying? No, it's, a, it's, it's honestly a combination of two things. Um, the first is you have to understand my parents are not, and I say this meaning in, entirely, they are not bullshitters. Like, if, yeah. if I was wacky through, and because they're musicians, they, they've been around goats and greats. My mom used to sing for Daryl Coley. My dad used to play drums for James Cleveland and Kurt Franklin right back in the 90s. So it's like they know their crap. And if mm -hmm. I wasn't good at this, like, like good enough to make a career out of this, they would have stopped me a long, long time ago. Yeah, they're not yeah. the ones that would be like, that's my baby. She's the best one. Like, no, 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 no. If I was whack. And they told me sometimes there's some, some stuff, you know, along the way, growing as an artist, where I need to do better and, and you know, evolve and, and do. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think as an artist, you have to be able to take criticism and be better. So my parents are definitely one of the major uh, influences and, and reasons why I know I'm good at what I do. But aside from, of course, they're just your parents. Um, the reactions that I get every time I do something live. Like, it's one thing to have followers who follow you on social media. Mm -hmm. And you know, blah blah blah. But a lot of them come out to my shows and when they see me, they're like, Oh my god, 
just so little. Like, I guess I yeah. keep myself largely, but yeah, I'm only like five feet, you know what I'm saying? And 100 pounds soaking wet. So, you know, I'm, I'm child size, but the reaction I get from them, the love I get from them is crazy. Uh, how much time I need? <laughs> See, this is not me. This this Deborah. See, I got I got to go on Miss Deborah's schedule. Oh yeah, I got a couple more questions. Here. Yeah, I just got a few more questions. We good. Yeah. We good. Too. Okay, for sure. For sure. For sure. So, being a woman in the industry, you know, what I'm saying like what I ask a lot of women when I interview them is, how you keep your sanity? You know, what I'm saying what's what's self care for 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 T P? You know, what I'm saying like how do you just if you want to get away and just you know regroup and everything. You want to know what, what kind of regroups me? And, and I know a lot of sisters can relate. It's um, washing my hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is nothing more black, I feel like, than hair day for, for a black woman. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that can you get into, you are literally washing out your roots. You are getting to your skin, your scalp. You, like, the very bottom base of you, you are massaging, rubbing, cleansing. And I feel like that's more than just a physical thing. It's a spiritual thing. You get to get in touch with you. And by the time you finish, you feel, you know, I twisted my watch a couple days ago. I feel like a whole new girl. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's definitely one of the things that just is me time. You know, I'm not necessarily listening to music while I do it, but I'm just, I'm peeing. My tea pee, I'm just I'm pee. Do you got to watch her hair? You know gotcha. what I'm Everybody, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm bald, but shit, you know, I got to you know, rub my scalp and all that. What's the beard? Don't do your face. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that's yeah. definitely centered. And just chilling. Just, just, I can center myself just, just chill just netflix and chill like, sometimes yeah. i can be basic like everybody else so, <laughs> yeah okay okay so with everything going on you know what i'm saying especially with the black community um you know what i'm saying you being a woman an artist and you're really using your platform to bring awareness just to a lot of different situations what are your um solutions for the black community you know what i'm saying just to improve our well-being mm -hmm. from just the healthcare industry to just right. mental state, just everything, you know what I'm saying? Well, a lot of times, and I know a lot of people have said this, the black dollar is so powerful. I mean, yeah. we say that, but we have to say it and, and use it, you know, do it. So how powerful the black dollar is, because honestly, yeah. you know, it's unfortunate, but the way the government and our society is set up, they don't really hear us until we start talking to them via money. Um, and that's, that's what it is. We live in a very capitalistic country. It's, it's the definition of how our government works. Mm -hmm. But that, that dollar, our dollar, is incredibly powerful. We have to understand the power that we have. We've been told for so many years, decades, centuries, you know, that we're not of value. We are less than. We are not, you know, worth or equal to, you know, the white man or blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And to an extent, I mean, if you keep counting that into a culture, they will start to interpret that and believe that. But I believe right now is such a great time because minds are continuing to open. People are starting to really realize their value and that they are, if not more valuable to the foundation of this country and to its future, then, you know, your average, you know, white person, white male or female, and that's not being racist. That's just looking statistically and looking at the facts. Mm -hmm. um, they will be the minority within a few years, and there's really nothing that they can do about it. So our power is is increasing, and I think that's the reason why they're always trying to hide that from us, you know? And also, aside from the money tip, I'm a very big health advocate, especially for my community, because... If you look around our neighborhoods, it's a lot of fast food joints, it's a lot of chicken joints, it's a lot of, you know, grease, cholesterol, and they have, like, you can get, like, four meals for $20, it's insane. You know what I'm saying? And um, black wealth, black health is equivalent to black wealth for me. And I, I stress that. Yeah, health is wealth, definitely. Yeah, black wealth, health is equivalent to black wealth. Like, that, if we're not alive to make a change, you know, we can't see those dollars if we're not alive to, you know, really make that thing happen, so... It's a bunch of facets, but I definitely think health and the black dollar are the two main things we need to focus on because if we can live longer, we can make more. If we make more, then that's better living not for us, but just for our next generation as well. So that wealth, not rich, but wealth. Yes, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Tia, thank you for a lot of the just dropping a lot of wisdom. It's good to getting to know you today. Nice, um, man. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah, drop it. all your uh, social media information. You know what I'm saying? How can the people find you and, uh, you know what I'm saying, listen to all your music? I got you. Okay, so you definitely can find me at IMTP. That's on the Instagram, IMTP.com. That's the website that has photos, information about where I'm at, what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. Um, YouTube, YouTube.com slash IMTP. Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, Amazon Music, all that good stuff. Wherever you can buy, stream, or download music, you can find me. Okay, so do all that. Um, I got the website, Twitter, Instagram. Yeah.
I think that's everything. Um, and yeah, shout out to uh, my publicist, Classic, for linking us, linking us together. Um, and again, my management, 6X Entertainment. Can't forget. Um, teamwork, make the dream work. So, yeah. yeah. Love it. Definitely, definitely. We, we oh, continue to support we'll, you. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, before I cut you off, I'm doing a, uh, we're dropping a graduation song for 2020 because I know 2020 kind of sucks a little bit for a lot of the graduates. And I'm going to yeah. do a challenge. So, if anybody out there is on TikTok, if you hear the song and you can create a really dope dance to the song called Congratulations, I made it. Uh, your dance will be the official TikTok dance, and I'll post it and promote it, and I will learn your TikTok dance. Hey, y'all get on that. Yes. Yes. Get on that. Yes, yes, oh, yes, yes. I love okay. it, love it. Well, we're going to continue to support you. Good luck in all your endeavors, and we're definitely going to run this back soon. You know what I'm saying? Let's, Another time. let's get it. I'm game, I'm game. Thank you Got for having it. me again, man. No problem. You have a good day. You too. Uh, <laughs>